Hey, my name is Ling. I'm a registered nurse. I recently started an eight-week travel nurse job in an acute rehab facility, and I see so many cases that I didn't see before in an acute hospital. Many of you guys are very familiar with acute hospitals and the long-term nursing facilities, because all of us have our clinicals in those places. Maybe not many of you guys know about rehab facility. So rehab is a care. That can help patients go back and keep or improve abilities that they need for their daily lives. So, what kind of patients do we have there? Like brain、uh, injuries, like stroke patients, like MS patients, and、um, spinal cord injury patients, and so on. So today I'm going to talk about spinal cord injury that you probably are not going to see a lot in any of your clinicals, but I can see a lot in the rehab facility. And this topic may be going to be on your next neuro exam. So let's go. So question number one: Which patient is at highest risk for a spinal cord injury? One: A 19 years old male with a history of driving and drinking. And two, 25 years old female with a history of substance abuse, or three, 60 years old female with osteoporosis, or four, 55 years male with coaches, a soccer team, and has history of hypertension. If you choose option number one, and you are correct, there are three major risk factors for spinal cord injuries. There are age, especially younger adults, and second of all, gender, higher indicates in males, and alcohol or drug abuse. Female tend to engage in less risk-taking behavior than young men, and also the most common for spinal cord injuries are car accidents and falls. And also penetrating trauma like stabbing or gunshots. There are two younger gentlemen in my rehab facility. Both of them were falling down from high trees that they were trying to cut down in their backyards. And there is also a very young girl, only 19 years old, who got spinal cord injury because of a car accident. Option two is also a high risk case, but there is a question as for the highest risk. So the answer is option one. A patient has manifestations of autonomic dysreflexia. Which of those assessments will indicate a possible cause for these conditions? Select all the apply. Option one: hypertension. Option two: kink catheter tubing. Option three: respiratory wheezing and strider. And four is twist. Bed sheet and number five is fecal impaction. If your answers are two and four and five, and then your answers are right. In the rehab that I work, most of the spinal cord injury patients have Foley catheter. Whenever the patients have AD, the very first things I check is if their Foley catheters got kink. Eighty percent of the case of AD is because of the kink catheter. Sometimes can also be the irritations of their wrinkle bedsheet. So you just have to unkink the Foley caster or make sure the bedsheet is neat. Make sure there is no wrinkles. And all of my spinal cord injury patients are on all kinds of stool softeners, Marilax twice a day and Colas twice a day. All of those is to make sure those patients don't have constipation because focal impaction is also. A cause of AD. I also have a patient because of a brain cancer metastasis to spinal cord, and also he is in high risk for AD. And also he has a history of small bowel obstruction. So we have to do is call um digital rectum stimulation. That is Coley's suppository in the rectum, and、uh, just wait about an hour or an hour and a half. The nurse. Which is me use a finger to stimulate the rectal muscle. 
so that patients can have a bowel movement. Yeah, I don't miss that at all. Other options don't cause AD and hypertension is the result of AD. And also pressure injury or skin irritation can also be the cause for AD. The girls I was talking about, the 19 years old, have a car accident. She also have an on-stage pressure injury at her uh, sacrum and she have a wound vac. So there was one night she was developing another AD again. Me and another nurse ate a check for her Foley caster. It wasn't unkinked. Uh, we stretched her bed sheet so there was no wrinkle. At last, we find out that it was because of her wound vac dysfunction. So we fixed the problem and her blood pressures went back down to normal and her AD is gone. The 19 years old girl, the patient of mine that is in my rehab, she can actually tell me that she's having an AD. She will say to me she's having a terrible headache and she feel like hot and uh, she feel dizziness. She say like the room is spinning. The nurse in the rehab unit is caring for the following patients. Which patient should the nurse assess first after receiving the shift change report? Option 1. The patient with a C5 spinal cord injury who is complaining about dyspnea and has crackers in the lungs. Option 2. The patient with an L4 spinal cord injury who is crying and very upset about being at the hospital. Option 3. The patient with an L3 SCL who is complaining about a headache and feeling very hot. Option 4. The patient with a T5 spinal cord injury who is unable to lift the lower legs. If you answer option 1 and that is correct, higher SCI patients, especially for higher than CA, have higher risk for respiratory problems. So the first patient should be seen immediately. And option number 2, psychosocial need is not the priority. And option 3, oh my god, you might think this patient is having autonomic dysreflexia and that is an emergency. However, such as L3 uh, SCI is a lower risk for autonomic dysreflexia. AD usually happens for patients have SCI higher than T6. And option 4, T5 spinal cord injury patients, they can't lift their legs anyway, so that is normal. And these questions you need to think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Physiological problem is always the priority and then the airway is the top priority. In assessing the patients with the TTL SCI, which signs and symptoms would be the nurse expect to find to support the diagnosis of spinal shock? Option 1. Inability to move upper arms. Option 2. No reflex activity below the waist. Option 3. Complaints about the room is very hot and has a pounding headache. Option 4. Hypotension and tachycardia. Did you just answer option 2 and that is right. So what is spinal shock? Spinal shock is immediately lost functions below the injury site within 30 to 60 minutes to 6 weeks. And the symptoms for that are hypotension and bradycardia and warm skin. So the question here says the patient has a T12 spinal cord injury which is near the waist area. So the second answer is correct. Option 1 is happen to patients with a higher level of spinal cord injury and option 3 is the symptoms of AD and option 4 is wrong. Neural shock is hypertension and bradycardia, not tachycardia. And alright, and that's that for the spinal cord injury, and good luck for your neural exam. I will see you next time. Bye!